Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the course on Pakistan studies. This is lecture number 27. The title is Education in Pakistan. This lecture will be divided into three parts. First, we'll discuss the importance of education. Second, we will be talking about the major educational issues. Three, kinds of education in Pakistan. Let's take up the first part, that is, importance of education. We will discuss the importance of education with reference to an individual, the society, and the state. State here means Pakistan. Every individual is born with certain qualities and attributes. Education helps to shape those qualities and attributes. Education helps an individual to be more relevant to the society, to the family, and this relevance is positive relevance and an individual can be more helpful to his family, to the society, to the environment if he has proper education and training. Education creates sense of purpose. Education makes a person goal-oriented. That is, you have certain goals, you have certain objectives which you would like to achieve. And education uh, gives you that kind of sense and also gives you a direction through which you could achieve the goal that you have set out for yourself. Education also gives you entitlement to do job or to enter professions. In order to enter different professions or for doing certain jobs, you need to have some minimum educational or academic qualifications. So if you don't have education, if you don't get uh, the required academic qualifications, you are not entitled for certain jobs and professions. You can't even apply for jobs and profession. Therefore, education also uh, has an economic dimension in one's life. You get into job, you get into employment, and you enter a profession to lead a life as an effective and, uh, and functional individual in the society. Citizenship is an important responsibility of an individual. Education helps an individual to become a citizen. That is to say, it helps you to understand your rights and your duties. How you go around asking for your rights, what are the duties that state as well as society has assigned to you. And if you understand your rights, if you understand your duties, you can be more effective citizen than a person who is not really conscious of his or her rights and also not conscious of uh, the duties, then that person cannot be an effective, a useful citizen. Education is also integral to the nation building process in any state. That is the process 
through which you become identified with the nation, with the state. Here we'll say it's a process through which you learn the basic and primary values and principles of being a Pakistani. What do you mean by a Pakistani? And what are your obligations? That is a process through education. That is why education has a socialization aspect. That is from an individual. It makes you citizens. It gives you certain basic and primary values of society. From generation to generation, values and heritage is, is transmitted and this is done through uh, education. And this socialization is very important. If you want that a society must be a strong society, sense of unity, sense of cooperation should be there, then you have to inculcate the basic values of your society and your state amongst individual and education is one important mechanism, instrument of transmitting those values and principles. Education can be looked at from another perspective. Education is an important indicator of socio-economic development. How developed is a particular country or a particular state? One important indicator is literacy and education. Are people trained and educated? And if people have proper education, proper training, then population becomes an asset. If you have large population, but they lack education, they lack training, then that population can become liability. So in other words, the significance of education is that it can turn something from liability to an asset, to strength, to wealth of a country. Education also helps you to understand your environment, your domestic environment, your international environment, how international factors influence you, affect you sometime positively, sometime negatively. And in other words, you are better placed to relate yourself to the environment and to the circumstances and conditions you have to deal with. You are better equipped to deal with the changing conditions, changing circumstances, new challenges, problems, difficulties that you face. It is this education that gives you that confidence, capability and also will and desire to meet the challenge and also to work for the progress, development and reconstruction of your society. Islam asked Muslims to have education. Other religions also value education. And as Muslim, you are supposed to have education. And similarly, 
other religions have also advised their followers that they must have education, they must equip themselves to deal with the situation and education is one way to do that. Now we move on from importance of education to educational issues in Pakistan. If we look at education in Pakistan in historical perspective, that is from 1947, establishment of Pakistan to the present, we can say that Pakistan has made commendable effort in the educational field. Over the years, educational facilities have been extended. More funds are available than was the case in 1947 or in the 50s. More support is available for different kind of education. Just to give you one example, when Pakistan came into existence in 1947, Pakistan had only two universities, Punjab University in Lahore and Dhaka University. In 1971, Dhaka University was lost to Bangladesh. So you could say that the post-1971 Pakistan or present Pakistan only had one university at the time of independence and today we have a large number of universities and degree awarding institutions in the state sector or public sector and the private sector. Similarly, schools, colleges, enrollment, there are positive signs, these have increased, different commissions have been set up, Dif new educational policies were enforced, which show that education has enjoyed attention in the past and even today. And we can also look at the development plans which were introduced in Pakistan starting uh, in 1951 when the first six year plan was introduced then from 55 onward series of five year plans first, second, third, fourth, four, five year plans were introduced and you, if you examine the details of these five year plans we find that education was part of all these plans because policy makers were of the view that without education and good education, you can't have a society that is progressing and that is developing. So in a way we can say that in the historical perspective we have made good strides in the field of education. However, when we make a critical evaluation of education system and how much money was spent on education, how we dealt with education, we realize that there are host of issues and problems that confront education in Pakistan. If we want education 
to be really effective in building human resources, in equipping individuals to deal with the environment, then those issues have to be addressed so that deficiencies and weaknesses are taken care of and we can make greater contribution to nation building through education which is one of the primary goal of education that is you engage in nation building through education. Now let's identify some of the problems or issues of education in Pakistan. The first issue is the problem of resources. Financial allocation to the education sector is not satisfactory. There is a need to allocate more funds, more resources uh, to education. If we compare allocations of resources by the state, Pakistani state, to education with the resources which those countries made available to education that have progressed after Second World War, then we find Pakistani allocations are meager and limited. Furthermore, most allocations for education go to salary and administration and limited resources are available for extension of facilities, infrastructure and research. If education is to be promoted, we have to spend more resources for building and other infrastructure for education institutions and then you have to spend more money on research because without research education cannot fulfill its primary function in a society. As a matter of fact, expenditure on education should be viewed as investment rather than expenditure because you are investing for nation building, you are investing for building a society that is harmonious and that is making progress. Therefore, whatever you spend on education is an investment for better and prosperous future. Second major educational issue is low literacy in Pakistan. The official figure show that about 46 percent of Pakistan's population is literate. However, if we examine and scrutinize this figure, we will find that people whose literacy is meaningful, their percentage is lower. Meaningful means who could read comfortably certain books, paragraphs in certain books, understand it and then also write what they have read. Then literacy rate in Pakistan would go down. Women literacy is lower than literacy amongst men. 
Similarly, if we compare rural and urban areas, in rural areas, literacy is generally lower than the urban areas. Now, this is an area that is literacy where attention has to be given. You have to make sure that illiteracy gradually goes away and more and more population is literate. Third major educational issue is problem of low enrollment in schools and the retention of students in the primary and the high schools. And retention means uh, that the uh, problem is that gradually students drop out. So it becomes the problem of retaining students in the classes. Enrollment in the primary school is lower than the primary school age going people or children available in the society. There is a need to have more educational facilities at the primary level and also at the high school level so that more and more people are enrolled. That is, they go to school, they get education there. An allied problem is that all those who are able to go to school at the primary level do not stay in the education process. The drop rate is high. Therefore, there is a need to retain children in schools, whether you are talking of the primary school or high school, that you can do by providing incentives to them, by creating a better environment where they feel motivated to stay in the education process and move on as the age progresses. There are a lot of reasons why young children don't go to schools or they don't stay in the schools, they drop out. Poverty is one major reason. Parents can't afford to send their children to schools. They can't cover the expenses of sending them to school and instead they may like to send the young child for some odd job. So you have to address this problem of poverty if you want to retain students, especially the young students in the schools. Then in addition to that, a lot of people do not understand why for a child it is important that he and she goes to uh, school. The other side of this problem is that if we assume for discussion sake that all primary school a going age students want to go to schools, then unfortunately we do not have schools to accommodate all of them. The next set of problem relates to teachers. In order to ensure the quality of education, you got to have trained and qualified teachers. Teachers who are motivated to teach because teacher plays a key role in the education process, especially at the lower level, primary school teacher or high school teacher. How he conducts classes, 
how he or she deals with the students effects whether a student stays in the system or drops out sometimes teachers handle the young children in such a manner that they get discouraged or they get scared and they drop out therefore it is important to have trained qualified teachers teachers also need refresher courses to update their knowledge and then educational qualifications and incentives in terms of salary and other facilities if you look at the conditions of teachers in the primary schools especially in rural areas the conditions are pretty bad and a large number of teachers are not really motivated and therefore they are not in a position to make the kind of contribution they should make in the upbringing of the child at that stage another problem relates to student teacher ratio especially in government schools you have big classes large number of students that means that teacher cannot pay attention to these students cannot deal with individual problems of the students cannot help those students who need greater attention who are not good in studies and uh, could improve if greater attention is given to them therefore who is teacher how much he is qualified trained how much motivation he has what kind of facilities you have for teaching and teachers teacher needs support system infrastructure facilities to perform his job and if you don't have those facilities then you have problem in education fifth important issue relates to the examination system how to judge the academic achievement of a student that is a very crucial and a difficult process unfortunately the examination system that is normally followed pays greater importance and attaches greater premium to memory and system is such that you don't work hard throughout the year towards the end you prepare certain questions with the help of guides guest papers and then you can get through the exam this means that the objective is getting through the exam rather than academic excellence the exam examination system should take into account the excellence the depth of knowledge comprehension and understanding that is lacking in the examination system we hear lot of stories about the use of unfair means in the exams we hear about corruption how you can manage passing exam through corrupt means through unfair means this demoralizes a hard working student 
this discourages those who are goal oriented who are achievement oriented so you should have an examination system which rewards who work hard who go for excellence rather than a kind of a mechanical process which you can uh, deal with or you can get through through certain commonly established practices examination system also creates problems at the higher level university level where either you have the annual system or the semester system and in the annual system the system of grading is so depersonalized that sometime students have the complaint that they have their uh, scripts or their answer sheets have not been properly read and properly graded so if you want to improve the quality of education examination system has to be reviewed and modern uh, technology and modern methods have to be adopted to ensure quality in education and its examination system now we can move on to the next part of our lecture that is kinds of education what are different kinds of education levels of education uh, which are being followed in pakistan and we will start from the lowest and move upward to the top one or the first is the primary education and you all know that this is from 1 to 5 years and primary education is very crucial to building the education process and encouraging people to have education and to become a good student if primary education is a quality education what you are doing here you are laying the foundation therefore quality of primary education which means quality of teachers who give primary education the facilities which you make available for primary education is extremely crucial for later stages in fact the expert view is that the deficiencies in education at the primary and high school level adversely affect a student's performance at the higher level when the foundation of a student is solid at the primary and the high school level usually he or she performs better at the higher level so you have uh, primary education 1 to 5 years pakistan also experimented with mosque schools that you give initial education um, in the mosque or school attached with the mosque that system works in pakistan and there is an effort to make this education universal which means that all those school going children should go to primary schools and have education so this is the first step in the educational ladder the second is the middle level which is class 6 7 8 or year 6 7 eight third is the secondary level which is class 9 or 10 so you spend 10 years and you get secondary school education the next level 
which is the fourth level, is the higher secondary level, which is also called the intermediate level. And that is class 11 and class 12. It is intermediate level between secondary school certificate or education and the degree level. Next level is the degree level, what is BA and BSc. This level is spread over either two years or three years. If you are doing ordinary graduation, it's two years. If you are doing BA honors or BSc honors, then it is three years. If we compare degree education of Pakistan with other countries, we find that there are only a small number of countries that give BA degree after two years of education, mostly it is three to four years of education for getting graduation degree after what we call in Pakistan intermediate. So after intermediate or 12 years, generally you spend three years elsewhere, but in Pakistan you get graduation degree two years, or if you are doing honors, then you spend three years at that level. After this is what is known as the university level. This is also described as the postgraduate level. And here, different degrees are awarded, MA, MSc, which is the standard and normal degree. You have to spend two years to obtain the master's degree, whether it's MA or MSc at the university level. Then after that, you have two research oriented degrees. One is called MPhil, Master of Philosophy. The other degree is PhD or Doctor of Philosophy, which is considered to be the highest formal degree. There are some honorary degrees, but PhD is the formal degree which is the highest in academic ladder. Generally, MPhil and PhD are not considered next logical step for everybody having MA degree because these are highly specialized degree. And a small number of people do MPhil, and even smaller number of them are able to obtain PhD degrees. There are specialized diplomas and courses at the university or postgraduate level which are available uh, to students, and normally, Postgraduate education is with the universities. However, some of the colleges that have adequate facilities also undertake postgraduate education. The idea is to provide more opportunities to the students to do master's degrees in those colleges 
which have the facilities. In fact, some of those colleges which were teaching master's courses have recently been upgraded to the level of universities. But still there are colleges that do the teaching of master's courses, but their students are examined by the universities. The state universities uh, would examine them and universities would give the degrees, but teaching will be done by colleges. In addition to these educational levels or kinds, you also have professional degrees and professional educational institutions like medical professional degrees. These are doctors, nurses, paramilitary, uh, uh, paramedical training uh, institutions which give medical related degrees. You have dentistry institution which give degrees and make dentists. Engineering degrees, engineering colleges, engineering universities give engineering degrees. Agriculture degrees, that is also a specialized area. Commerce is another specialized area. You also have technical colleges which give technical graduation degrees or diplomas and uh, uh, provide uh, training and education in uh, different technologies and specialized areas. There is another kind of education. This is called adult education those people who could not get education in their young days, somehow they couldn't go to schools and they are uh, illiterate or semi-literate, for them state provide institutions, sometime voluntary organizations provide them facilities to get some basic education, enough to read things, enough to do their basic job, read, write, do simple and straight uh, mathematics. So this adult education is done in Pakistan. Adult education also helps to increase literacy rate. Because these are the people who missed education at the, at the proper time. And now you are trying to educate those people. So adult education is an important kind of education. Another kind of education is what is called distance education or distance learning. In this category, we talk about education for which you are not going to a formal institution. You are not registering yourself with a formal college or school, the traditional college and school we know about and we have been to those uh, schools and colleges and universities. You stay home in a distance education and then you get education through different ways and uh, different uh, means. This kind of education is important for those who are in service and want to improve their academic qualifications. Or for some reason they cannot now go to formal educational institutions. For them, distance education is the option to get qualification, to get 
degrees. This is done through different means. You are not going to classrooms and institutions, but you learn through different means. In Pakistan, two major institutions exist for that purpose. Ilama Iqbal Open University, which provides distance education primarily through TV, and also they have their um, tutorial centers in different cities where you can you know, get guidance and you can also obtain textbooks and they appoint tutors. Another example of distance education is uh, virtual university which uses television and also internet. Internet enables the university to reach a wider audience because internet can be approached anytime at the convenience of students and therefore this is the use of modern technology for learning and education. There are educational institutions which have been set up by the military and its different foundations. Those foundations run um, medical college and also give IT education. You have a National University of Science and Technology, Bahriya University set up by Bahriya Foundation, a new university, Air University is being set up uh, by the Shaheen Foundation. Currently, the important thing is that you make use of modern technology for education purposes, especially information technology. This has two kinds of relevance. First, you educate people in IT or information technology, computers, software, hardware. That's an important and new area. Second dimension is when you use new technologies, information technology, computers, internet, for strengthening the formal educational system. Because modern technology gives access, an easy access to knowledge, and we can modernize our education through use of modern technology. As a way of concluding the whole presentation on education, it can be said that Pakistan cannot progress, cannot develop, cannot become industrialized unless we pay attention to education and training. And the resources we spent on education is investment for creating a better nation, creating people who are trained and qualified to deal with the situation and could contribute to the development of this state. This concludes our discussion of education. Khuda Hafiz until we have the next lecture in Pakistan studies.